but I was just talking, I have, I've been having, always having conversations, right? It's a nice view where I'm at, but it's kind of, the sun was shining, but now it's a little gray. <laughs> I was just talking about women, us learning to um, negotiate. A lot of times, not you know, not and it's still it's surprising today, but then again, it's not surprising. A lot of women still feel uncomfortable negotiating, and it's something that we need to get over. And I believe it's because we don't really know our value. We live in a society that you know, for so long ago, women were devalued. There's always a glass ceiling, and yes, there is a glass ceiling that some of us are not able to. What we can, what we're doing today is creating our own lane, which is awesome. But there are a lot of places and companies where there is a glass ceiling that still exists for women, where men get paid more than us. But I've learned, because I've listened over the years to different, you know, um, just awesome talks and conversations and been at different conferences and, and just, just people that we listen to, um, especially the financial arena, talk a lot about the difference between women and men, and you always hear that women sometimes are still fearful of negotiating even their salary. And it was funny, it was my dream, you know, when I was in my 30s and I decided to go back to school to get my high school diploma and then continue to go to college, one of my dreams and things that I prayed for is like, God, I wanna be able to go to a company or job or whatever and tell them how much I wanna get paid. I want to be able to do that one day. That was like a dream that I had. And I thank God that I have been in situations where I'm able to do that. And I do that. I equip myself. I did the work. I invested in myself. So I know my value. I know my worth. And you know what? Sometimes we think it's always some big skill that we have to have. Sometimes you just have to know your worth. Your people skills can be more valuable than anything else. Because you have people who are very skillful at saying a particular in a particular area but they don't have good and I just told this to somebody earlier they're not good with customer service they don't know how to build rapport with people those are very important things especially in certain industries where they want you to be able to um, communicate well with people articulate um, ideas and concepts you know concisely and all that stuff and uh, some people can't do that and that can hurt that can hurt a business that can hurt a company you know, that can cause some issues among colleagues. And so don't underestimate the value that you have inside. So your integrity, your integrity, your skills, and your consistency, all of that matters. You know, you're dependable, you're reliable, all of that matters because those things people look for. So you got someone -so who may be real good at computer, something computers, right? Technology, or, or maybe a strong IT person, but they never show up. They don't know how to talk to people. They don't have good customer service when you're dealing with customers on the phones. How can you walk somebody through troubleshooting if you have a nasty attitude and you don't have patience with people? So those things still matter. So your values still matter. It does, it's very valuable because we have less of that today. You know, it's hard to find good customer service. So a lot of times I compliment people I meet that seem very nice, very respectful. I go, you know what? It's so refreshing meeting you. you it would just, it can make your day. And I tell them that, you know, cause sometimes they don't feel valued. Maybe by the employers don't value that. And you know, so it's almost become like a forgotten, it's not even a skill, something that we learn growing up, depending on how we grow up. But I just want you to think about that. Like don't be ever be afraid to negotiate. Know your worth, know your value. One thing my mother always said, and I still, I say it all the time, and I tell the people that the worst thing a person can do is say yes or no. And what, what can happen? What's the worst thing that can happen? That they say no, and you're not gonna die because they said no. You can make a decision if you want to partner with them or not. That's it. So think about the scenario way ahead of time. If they do say no, what is your plan of action? Think about it ahead of time so that way you're prepared. You're prepared mentally and you prepared yourself physically to deal with that, to cope with a no. Because some people have a problem with the word no because they see no as rejection. So again, you know I'm always talking about let's do that introspective work. What's going on inside here where you're not able to take, of course we don't like to hear no, but to take it as rejection, insult on you, on your character, or, some, or taking it real personal, that's a deeper issue. Maybe you're just not what they're looking for, and it's okay, it doesn't make you a bad person, or maybe it's something that you want to
do maybe just got to get some more skills and develop in that area so maybe not qualified for right now it still doesn't make you a bad person there's some areas i know i'm not qualified for we need to step into or maybe admire to and there's some things i prepared myself invested in myself so i would be in a position you know to take on such a position you know especially in leadership areas and i thank god for that thank god for the the, just the times when I'm able to shadow someone or learn from someone. I love that. I'm learnable. I'm teachable. Because I'm looking at the bigger picture. That's what we have to do. Look at the bigger picture. But yes, go and negotiate in the boardrooms and negotiate in the meetings. Negotiate at the interviews. Men do it all the time. They learn to do that at such an early age as part of who they are. But we're not, some of us are not used to that. We, maybe we didn't grow up around that. We just grew up around, well, let's take what we can get. Got job is a job. No. Oh, no, no, no. Mm -mm. Got to think bigger than that. No, this is career. I need something that's going to help me to get to the next level. Something that can teach me some skills. I spoke with somebody today. They were saying, that, you know, they they um going to teach their child to not just come out of school and, and go straight to work, but learn business. I said, that's fine. But don't negate the benefits of, um, you know, growing your character and learning certain values and basic things in society when your child goes to work at a job after school. I said, I think it's still helpful for that child to work after school before jumping into a job, but there's some things they need to know, like basic customer service, how to talk with people, maybe learning how to work the cash register, learning computer basic skills. You know what I'm saying? Those things are still, they still matter, and they're gonna matter later on. So I think it's still good because they also learn work ethic. So again, I said, look at the bigger picture, I got you. Teach that child entrepreneurship. Teach that child to go out there and investment. But sometimes you gotta also teach them that their job is their investor so that they can get money from their job and save. Where's the money coming from? Sometimes you may get an investor, but they wanna match what you have. So I just wanted to drop that with you today. Never be afraid to negotiate. Men do it all the time, women. Let's remove our own glass ceilings. We can create our own lanes. We don't have to wait. We don't have to wait for permission. Stop waiting for others to give you permission. That's what I'm saying. I never did. I don't. <laughs> That's why sometimes I say I'm rebellious because I don't always go with the status quo or the protocol. I mean, when there's some cracks in the protocol that are unfair, <laughs> I'm like, really? And who said that? Because I serve a God who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can even ask or think. That's what I'm talking about. So when you know you're a kingdom kid, you got a different mindset. You have a different mentality. <laughs> I was laughing because people are walking back and forth where I'm at. <laughs> like, who is she talking to? <laughs> anyway, you ladies have a wonderful day. Happy, happy love day. Happy Valentine's Day. Treat yourself good. Don't get caught up in the day if you're feeling, you know, if you're single like me and you don't have a day. I, I thank God years ago I got away from like just really celebrating the holiday so hard. I'm like, it's just another day a man set aside. And it's nice if you want to, if you, you know, want to celebrate and go out and do things, but it's okay if you don't. And it's okay if you say, you know what, I'm gonna date myself and I'm gonna treat myself, or I don't even think about the holiday. Just gonna relax, it's another day. I thank God to be alive in the land of the living. I can call some family and friends and go, happy Valentine's Day. Hi, happy love day. Hope you all are doing well. That's the bottom line.